cool. Here we go. I'm going to give you guys some insight into what it is I actually do with online consultation and online coaching. I get questions and emails all the time from people saying, my problem is A or B or whatever the case may be. What do I need to do? And I really try to politely tell them that I can give you a very broad generalization, but I have no idea because I don't know anything about you. And if you really want my professional insight, professional opinion and recommendations that we need to do a consultation and probably move into online coaching or program design or some longer term consultation. Um, and so this is what we get into. There needs to be an intake process. I don't know how you move. I don't know your injury history. I don't know your orthopedic limitations. So I can't give people firm advice because I don't have that background, right? Um, so there needs to be some individualization. So I'm going to go through two programs and give you guys some insight into what it is we do with online coaching and Skype consultations and let you see that I'm not trying to run people off by saying we need to have a Skype consult. I need to have a Skype consult so that I can give you my undivided attention and my professional input. It also is a filter process for people that aren't willing to put in the effort. Um, as uh, strength and conditioning coach and personal trainer and also you know I work with a lot of people that are in pain I see a lot of people that just aren't willing to put in the effort to resolve their issues so people need to step it up you know if you're really interested in kind of overcoming some limitations and really improving step your game up you know you gotta pay for quality insight in life um, so this one is uh, one fellow I've been working with for about two months this is a pop-up program and then we're also going to go over a paddling program so you'll be able to get some insight from this but be aware that this is particular to this person this is also as you see a b c this is program d this is our fourth program we've been working together for about two two and a half months um, he's got some big surf trips coming up and has been having a lot of issues with his pop-up i get questions about pop-ups all the time and you'll see that it's a very individualized process and quite comprehensive. Um, this is an ex-college athlete. Uh, he's, I believe, about 46 now. Um, I could be wrong on the age, but uh, he's had a knee issue for about 20 plus years. Um, has also had hip problems, both hips, some people would call, he just calls it pinching. It's basically an FAI, a femoral acetabular impingement syndrome. Um, that's what somebody had told him. As we've gone through and gotten to know him better, I don't think it's as much of an FAI as just his hips weren't moving very well, quite tight. So he was getting some, some pinching. Um, so we've taken a lot of time to get here. So not all of this program will apply to you, but you will be able to get some insight. Uh, most people's hips, especially the older guys, your hips don't move well. You've spent too much time sitting. Um, ideally, if I'm with somebody in a clinical or gym setting, I'm also a licensed massage therapist as well um, through several soft tissue modalities. And so some hands-on, really getting the hips moving. If not, I like to combine um, fascial release work of some sort, tennis ball, lacrosse ball, even some foam rolling and stretching. He has a whole other stretching program. But in this one, we're getting through some quadriceps, pin and stretching, and really getting the tissue moving better on the front of the thigh. Um, you can see I'm rolling on some tennis balls and all through up the TFL, vastus lateralis to the lateral quad, the rectus femoris, all those things can affect the knee joint as well as the knee movement. So we're, we're moving through that tissue. This video is a 25 minute video of, I think there's like 10 videos total in my stretchesforsurfers.com. If you have stretch problem or stretching questions, flexibility, pain issues, this is the way to go. Um, high hamstring release, uh, seated pin and stretch in the high hamstring. I'm seated on a lacrosse ball. We need to make sure that the tissue on the front of the hip joint as well as the back of the hip joint is pliable in a sense, that he can move, that he has the ability to move through that hip joint. And we're also going through adductor release. So we're really trying to move three-dimensionally through that hip joint. So some tissue release combined with particular stretching where we have found him to be tight through the Skype video analysis and movement, movement assessments. Um, we are tractioning his hip joint in this one circuit uh, through various deep or hip positions, external rotation, internal rotation, flexion, extension, literally tractioning that hip joint, creating some space within that capsule. Um, we, I've gotten to know him. This does not apply for everybody. You need to be careful when using this. Uh, and 
Um, we're making some space in that joint and then going through some various deep squat positions. Uh, it's taken us, it took us probably a month to really get him to be able to deep squat pain-free, safely, and comfortably. And now we're working on external rotation, internal rotation. I really like to try and restore the ability to deep squat. There are some people that can't because of structural limitation or pain issues or, or, or arthritic change. Um, but it's if you can deep squat, it's just really showing that you have full capacity to move through ankle, knee, hip. And that's, in my opinion, really quite important to be able to pop up smoothly and efficiently. And then we go through a frogger which is basically just jumping in and out of a low squat position, laterally, forwards, backwards. Um, and again, it's taken time for us to get there. So then <clears throat> any training program really needs to be far more comprehensive. Like I'm not going to give somebody, this is what you do just for the pop-up. We need to create a more capable person, more movement-oriented person. So pull-ups, I'd say maybe one out of 10 guys I see can actually do a really good pull-up. So first we have to restore the flexibility of the upper body to get the arm overhead. And then strict pull-ups, full hang out of the bottom position, learning how to slide the scapula down the ribs and then pulling. He's put in the effort, man. So now we're actually going to failure, really working on some work capacity, as many reps as possible, consistent up-down movement. And then he's combining that with a Cossack squat, which you can see this full lateral position with a TRX assistance. Uh, he still can't completely gravity load this because that's a lot of work through that joint. But really working on him being comfortable and learning how to load a hip through full flexion, full knee flexion, and ankle dorsiflexion. And getting comfortable controlling the hip, controlling the knee. And in between these, actually, he is now working on uh, pop-ups, um, the actual movement of a pop-up. A lot of guys will start practicing their pop-up, but they don't have the strength or they don't have the flexibility, so they're just reinforcing a bad movement pattern. So it took us probably, I think, about five weeks before we started even working on the pop-up. Once we reinforced the strength and got him moving better, then we start cranking out the actual pop-up movement. Um, and Cossack squats, there were a lot of regressions of this movement before we started working on this. Um, a dumbbell lunge variation, uh, he's actually doing almost a shrimp squat where this knee would be coming into over the toes now that he has enough knee range of motion. This back knee would be right behind the ankle. This foot would be right where about the knee is. So it's really almost a single leg assisted squat and really getting, again, him to control and strengthen the squat movement, full expression of the joint motion and being comfortable getting out of that bottom position. You know, once he gets his legs up and under him, he needs to extend up and out of it. Uh, a lot of guys will go right to jackknives, and usually it's a few, two steps ahead of the game, but you can also see that this program is a lot more comprehensive than just working on some jackknives for the pop-up. Um, he had been doing single leg jackknives, which we've now replaced with this twister. Uh, good movement make sure there's adequate core control and good rotation. This isn't directly correlated to the pop-up position per se, but it's working on core control, rotational core control, quality movement. Um, so yeah, the suspension strap jack knives. Most people are really lacking core control, so already they would be sagging the low back and not controlling their hip position. So this is about the fourth rendition of jack knives that we've worked on. Uh, single leg hip extension with knee flexion, like you can see, uh, it's taken us a long time to get to the single leg version. I'm really trying to reinforce um, hamstring control and glute control. A lot of people, that posterior chain is just really weak. And this is to help reinforce that kind of knee issue that he has had or strengthen that knee issue. And this will progress into single leg deadlifts. Um, I like to see guys being able to do at least six to eight reps per leg. Um, most cannot at first. And then we go into some stretches in the dead bug. Dead bug is working on anterior core control. Um, it's also along with breath. I, I always walk through this with people, uh, in terms, so right now he'd be fully exhaling, compressing the ribs down, drawing in the entire abdominal wall and not letting his low back arch off the ground. Um, so essentially the core, the anterior core is having to resist the lever arm of this leg being out straight. Uh, most people don't do these efficiently. These should be quite tough when done properly. And this is laying the foundation for a lot more core work in a sense. Um, Spider-Man stretch with reach. Eric Cressy, thanks for the video, buddy. Smart man right there. Uh, this is just a really good three-dimensional stretch, hitting hip flexion, 
hip extension, thoracic spine rotation. A lot of you older dudes, you don't move well. And once you don't move well through a joint, that becomes a problem. Uh, so you can see, you know, there's been quite a lot of other programs. Uh, this guy has put in the effort. I have given him the tools. That's what the online coaching process is about. Give him the tools. He applies the effort. We link up for Skype consults every week or other week. Progress, regress as necessary. You can see that's quite a long stretch program there um, and a lot of variety of exercises. So you can see it's a lot more comprehensive than somebody sending me an email and saying, hey, I'm having a problem with my pop-up. What should I do? Because I don't know anything about you. And this whole surf fitness thing is a lot more than just working on some silly stuff, you know, bouncing balls or whatever. It's, it's really about improving your overall athletic capacity, um, working out any pains and issues you may have, getting stronger, getting stronger three-dimensionally so you can keep doing the sport that we all you know, really, really are passionate about. Um, so give me a second and I'll pull up the, uh, the next program. All right, so this is a paddling program. I've worked with this dude for probably almost eight months, six months, six or eight months now. And initially started just with a consultation going over nutrition and it has progressed into a lot of training. He's had an ongoing back problem ex-crossfitter, avid surfer, um, coming into winter, he lives somewhere they've got to wear some thick wetsuits. So we're upper, we're ramping up the upper body work capacity. Um, and again, I've really, he and I have worked together and taken the time to figure out what his body needs. He's back to full, full compound lifts, um, pain-free. That's huge. So <clears throat> he has put in the effort again. Uh, we are going through a band fascial stretch. This is to make sure he has full range of motion overhead because there's a lot of overhead pressing and pulling in this movement. So stretching out just this entire lateral side, anything kind of inferior arm underneath that armpit that could be restricting shoulder flexion, so lat, teres major, all that stuff, QL even, opening up the ribs. And then through the Spider-Man stretch, you can tell I'm a fan of that Spider-Man stretch. Good movement, getting the hips mobile and really getting that thoracic spine rotating. Got to get upper body rotation. Again, if, you've had, if you're having limitations with rotation or stretching or flexibility or pain, check out stretches for surfers.com. Um, and we drive into this first circuit. Uh, actually, what we'll do, let me switch that. His first exercise is a high-speed cable chop. And again, with a back problem, you need to take time to make sure you reinforce proper core control. He and I have spent a lot of time working on core control and stability of the spine to now doing high speed lateral. Oops, let me save that so you can see it. I don't know why it won't come up. Uh, so high speed cable chops. That's being annoying. It won't show the video. Sorry. Uh, but you can see the movement. Big lateral lunge, high speed chop. He's doing six reps per side of high speed power. Uh, it's taken a lot of progression and training to get to this high speed stuff and doing it safely. But this is movement has so much carryover when done really, really well. Um, I, saw, I see a lot of people doing this really inefficiently. A part of the consultation process and on the coaching process would be uh, have all my clients film their movements and text me their uh, their movements so we can go ahead and give immediate feedback within their gym setting. Uh, then we go into a push press with one of these pulling movements. Very little rest period here, 45 seconds. So we're hitting pretty high rep, 15 reps there and failure here. Uh, so dumbbell push press, getting some shoulder pressing capacity, uh, but really 15 reps of this movement coming into a full squat position and out of it, working on lower body, movement control, flexibility, but also just ramping up the output. 15 reps of these with a weight that is tough to get 15, that's a lot of, uh, a lot of work capacity coming out of that. It's not an easy movement to do repeatedly with good form. And then we go into one of these pulling movements. He, last program, had been doing weighted pull-ups and chin-ups. So we've taken the weight out of it and we're going into high speed now to failure. Um, failure meaning as many reps as he can do with perfect form. So you can see that 15 reps of that and then to failure with only a 45 second rest period. 
Uh, it's, it's a lot of movement condensed into a short period of time, really get the heart rate up. And then we go through a full mobility circuit. Um, inchworms, which hit a lot of hamstring flexibility, anterior core control, uh, good quality movement. You can see inch up, so we're working on some ankle flexibility, hamstring flexibility, he's really pressing through the shoulders. Thoracic bridges, good movement. I have just about everybody working on these. Lots of rotation, shoulder stability. Anybody with shoulder funk, this will take time for you to get here. Um, it took us time for him to get here, but really quality movement. And then half kneeling adductor mobilizations, but we're working on Cossack squats now. Um, body weight Cossack squats. So, <clears throat> you know, some endurance work, some high speed strength power work, full mobility circuit. And then so much of paddling is just shoulder health that we're going through active and passive hanging circuits. Um, again, with the older guys, you need to take the time to get the mobility to even get your arms overhead. And then we go through active and passive hanging. Um, I've got him doing, I believe, up to three minutes of work here. And really just looking at overall shoulder health and even some wall slides. So we're working on the mobility of the shoulder, being able to get those arms up overhead into external rotation, keeping the spine flat against the wall, keeping the ribs stable, driving the arms up, working on low trap control. Um, this is really hard for most people because they're way too tight through pecs, pec minor, lat, subscapularis. Not the greatest video though. Um, really good paddling endurance program. Here's a whole other paddling program. I'll just give you a sneak peek at this one. You can see this one is a big circuit, lots of movement. So there's a lot of volume in the upper body in this program. Um, foundation training. If you don't know what found a founder, if you don't know what foundation training is, I suggest you check it out. Um, Google foundation training. I'm a certified foundation training instructor. Eric Goodman, the founder of this, really quality stuff, man. These guys are onto some good stuff. Everybody I work with does some type of foundation training. Um, and if you're not familiar with it, check out either their website or my blog. I've got a, a blog post about foundation training. So well, you can see that online coaching is generally an ongoing process. It's minimum a month. Most people end up staying on for three to five months. I have very, very few people drop off after a month. And even program design, even if you want to do only program design, it's minimum a month just so that we can make sure you are doing everything efficiently, right? I can't just give you a program and say, hey, here you go. I need to make sure you do it well. Otherwise, it's kind of fruitless. It's a professional lacking on my part. And also the consultation. If people are serious about getting my input, there needs to be a consultation process. Um, a, because it's it's doing a disservice to my professional capacity if it's just via email because I haven't seen how you move and I'm doing you a disservice because I'm not giving you the best possible options. So there's a couple things you can look at for all this training. You should have some ideas from that. It'll give you some insight into the online coaching process or the consultation process. If you have some serious insight or you have some serious desire to improve and want qualified professional insight, get in touch. I guarantee we can put you on a path to moving better and getting stronger and helping to resolve pain. And if I don't think I can help you, I will honestly tell you that and I will refer you to somebody or a direction to go towards. Uh, so if you're ready to step it up, let's do it. Get in touch. Email me and uh, happy to see. We can hop on Skype and see if there's some stuff we can do. And yeah, take care of yourselves. Again, this whole surf fitness thing drives me crazy. Um, makes my skin crawl that term, but it's really about improving your overall capacity, improving the way you move, improving your strength and improving your speed, and just so you can move better, so that you can do what you want to in life. I work with a lot of surfers, people in general, that are in pain and they're limited in what they can do in life because they hurt and they can't move and they've done nothing with their body for the past 15 or 20 years or even longer and they wonder why it's a problem. So it's about improving your overall performance and so we look at a lot more than just the movement. How's your breathing? How's your nutrition? How's your sleep patterns? That is the stuff that we need to focus on to improve your performance and that I can't do with people via one email. If you're serious about improving, you need to get in touch. We can get into this stuff seriously via consultations via Skype or online coaching. Cool. It's giving you some insight. Apply. Get in touch. Peace.